flowers in the meadow they say keep my head low pretty things pretty disasters yeah let go of your fantasy that's what they told me now my head hurts i can't comprehend please don't take a hi everyone welcome back to my mental health and illness documentary today we're going to be talking about adhd and add Unfortunately, this is one of the, technically fortunately, this is one of the illnesses that I do not um, personally suffer with, so I am not going to be there for, you know, the personal insight portion, but um, I will have the people I had interviewed take the lead on explaining their experiences with ADHD and ADD. Um, I will just be here as a helpful guide. <laughs> Definition time. Um, ADHD stands for um, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. ADD is just without the hyperactivity. The definition is a person with ADHD has differences in brain development and brain activity that affect attention, the ability to sit still, and self-control. Um, with ADD, it's more, they're not, it's the same thing, but without the hyperactive part. They just have the inability to focus in a broad way of explaining that rather than the inability to focus in addition to hyperactivity. Um, some symptoms include impulsiveness, problems prioritizing, poor management skills, problems focusing, um, the excessive activity or restlessness, um, but that's usually just for ADHD. Um, you can tell that I really don't know a lot about this illness and I feel bad about that. I've done a lot of research and I have talked to a lot of people about it, um, but you know, there's there's still that, that block right there where I, I you know, you're, you're not able to fully understand something that you don't experience. Uh, but I'm going to try my best to guide this episode. Uh, but as I said before, um, I'm really going to have the people who I interviewed take the lead on explaining ADHD and ADD. So ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder and ADD is Attention Deficit Disorder. The difference between the two of them is the hyperactivity proportion because attention deficit disorder is just I sit in class and I look like I'm paying attention and my mind is off in la la land not paying attention and I look like I'm looking at the board and listening to whatever teacher who's talking and in reality I'm not there I'm like you could say my name and I probably wouldn't hear you but the hyperactivity proportion, it's a lot of fidgeting, it's a lot of you need to get up and move around, you need to be doing stuff. Um, um, the classroom type of setting that we sit in is not really conducive to that either. Oh yeah, it's hard to focus and I just will get, so I'm a really outgoing person but when I don't take my medication I just like have no filter and I just like am very not afraid of saying anything that's on my mind and I will say things like I'll treat my teachers as my friends and I probably shouldn't <laughs> and I don't know, I'll just like that, like, I just come, like, a, I kind of have, like, a different personality. It's, like, my regular personality, but more outgoing, and I talk more, and everything's a little sped up, and I just can't focus in general. It's hard for me to do things for an extended period of time. Okay, so the first part of that, is it difficult to focus on something? Yes. Um, mine tends to be something I don't want to do, so... If we're sitting in class and we're taking notes, I have a lot of difficulty just sitting there and taking notes. I have to physically force myself to be like, okay, we're doing this. And then I have to like write basically everything to just keep my mind like on the topic. Yeah. My eyes bounce around cause I can't like 
I mean, that's part of my anxiety too, um, but I am like kind of taking in your entire room right now. <laughs> and I feel like my brain always has like 13,000 tabs open. <laughs> and also my room is occasionally a lot to take in. I love it. No, but like I love it. But I like I can look at everything and understand what it looks like, but I'm still like wow. <laughs> so, staying focused has always been an issue for me even now. I mean, it's more of something that I can kind of handle most times, but um it also depends on sleep and everything else but most of the time i try my best to stay focused just naturally and if i can't i find myself zoning out and just staring at specific items um or certain spots in rooms depending but um it, it can be very random at some times but um uh it, it's it totally depends on how i'm feeling and i normally can manage it pretty well now better than i used to so for me it's very difficult to focus on things that don't interest me I can become hyper-focused on things I am interested in, but for things like regular school, sometimes it can be very difficult to pay attention and keep paying attention. So normally I won't notice I'm not focused. Um, I, don't, I don't think most people do, but I'll just suddenly realize that I haven't been listening for 20 minutes and I don't know what's going on. And if I turn to ask the person next to me, they'll think I'm stupid. <laughs> That's another problem. I don't really try to keep myself on track um, <laughs> because most of my environments, like, like at work, I don't work is like mindless, like, because I'm a cashier, so I'm just like scanning stuff through. Honestly, half the time, like, my brain's like a split screen, and it's like half of it is this right now, and the other half is like. I'm kind of hungry and it's like, oh my gosh, I want to go to Florida. Like, and I'm like imagining like scenarios in my head. Um, and then in school, I don't do anything about it and I just zone out or play games on my phone. So what I tend to do is I tend to try to do things, low level concentration things like doodling or playing with my hands to keep myself from losing focus in the first place. And when I do lose my focus, I tend to try to put my pride aside and say, oh yeah, I zoned out for all of that. Can you maybe go over a little bit of that again? <laughs> but sometimes that can be difficult. Well, I ha I take Adderall and um, that definitely 100% helps. I took another medication, Concerta. I would take that in the morning and Adderall in the afternoon. But um, Concerta made me feel like a zombie, so I stopped taking it and I just take Adderall now like twice a day. So in terms of your illness, what does Adderall do for you? Um, for a normal person, Adderall will make you act like you have ADHD because it'll just like, you'll, but you're also like really focused at the same time. But for me, it just like calms me down and I become more of like the chill person I like to be. And then I also makes it capable of focusing. But like when you see people taking Adderall and like TV shows and stuff, they're like, all kooky but like focus on one thing for like eight hours at a time it's like I that does not happen to me <laughs> Obviously, as a kid, it would be certain things that I was thinking about and I was playing them through my head and wondering, should I do it or not? And it was a very close call on a lot of things. For example, I was at a kid's birthday party once and I remember I was watching a SpongeBob episode that day where he stuck his face in a cake and I thought it was hilarious and I was at this kid's birthday party and they were singing happy birthday and after they stopped, I proceeded to put my face in his cake and eat it. And it was traumatizing to him and he started crying and everyone else was kind of um, like dumbfounded that I did it. But um, it was a very weird instance, but obviously there's not a lot of times like that anymore where that happens. I tend to think still about impulsive things that I want to do, but I always am able to kind of wrangle myself in and think this isn't what you're supposed to be doing, you don't need to do that, and um, stop myself. But there are rare, rare case scenarios where I do find that I um, have issues with it. It's, it is, it's funny though, most of the time, no, nothing serious. So when I become hyperactive, 
it's very very difficult for me to sit still it's like a burst of energy and I don't really have much control over it uh, I get like impulses to act out to be louder more active more energetic and so it can be really difficult to rein that in it's kind of like a sugar high but randomly I so very rarely at this point do I have the hyperactivity impulsiveness component component that goes along with it um, mostly because as I've gotten older I've learned ways to deal with it and to work my way around it so um, for the hyperactivity proportion I run track I play soccer I if I don't have either one of those like it's not in season I um, We'll go to the gym after school. I try and like at least do something during the day that like if I've been sitting still all day or not like working out or like moving or like walking around, I can generally um, get it all out, get like that proportion of it out. Yeah, I think like bringing Chromebooks into the high school was like the worst thing, personally, um, because the thing about unrestricted internet access is <laughs> I could be on Instagram on my Chromebook. <laughs> my teacher thinks I'm writing an essay, and I'm on like Twitter, like <laughs> playing 2048. Um, and I don't. I mean, also I just don't learn as well with like the Chromebook in like Google Slides and stuff. But um, it's much harder to not do your work um, when you have a piece of paper and a pencil in front of you because even with my inability to focus, at least there's like something solid in front of me and it's like I can be looking around you're like doodling in the margins but I'm still eventually going to get back to that one task. I open my Chromebook when I get home from school and I close all the tabs I had open that were like had work in them and I just don't revisit them because <laughs> like, because I, I have it open in the background and it's like, I don't know, it's so hard for me to use a computer. <laughs> my mom likes to say that my grades have always been A's and F's because I'm smart, so I'll get like A's on like my tests and stuff, but I can't focus on anything, so like the schoolwork and the homework I just like won't do or I don't complete, so that has been a problem. So I think one thing that I do find that's very difficult throughout the past even four years of high school, um, even though I've been managing it for so long now, um, studying at home is very difficult for me. Having a space that I can kind of sit down and think to myself and work is very hard. At most, I can sit down for an hour, um, if less, and just study straight because my brain wants to wander off and do other things. So I'll pull up my phone or I'll do something else that's more distracting and I'll use that for a while. And then I find myself fully disconnected from doing the activity that I was doing previously and I can't control myself. So studying in general and doing well in school has always been a difficult part of my life and I think that even though I've managed it better the past few years, it's still very difficult. So I'm lucky enough that I've learned how to like deal with mine to the point where I actually don't even have a 504 anymore through the school because they're like she's not you don't need enough accommodations for us to put you on one which is nice but when I was little um, and I had one a lot of the accommodations that I was given like we weren't allowed to chew gum in elementary school so I could chew gum I could have extra time on tests like that was written in um, I could request, even if the teacher wasn't going to give an example, an example project so that I could get like a visual, that visual type of thing. Um, I could request for my seat to be moved at any time. Um, generally I would ask to be sat towards the front edge of the classroom so that, or in the front corner so that I could see it but there were no like, there was only one way I could look for the distraction and hopefully that was at the board. Mm -hmm. So that um, I wasn't like my eyes weren't wandering or something like that. 
So in fifth to sixth grade, I had an especially hard time with school. My grades were falling behind and I felt like there was a lot that was going wrong. Um, and that's when my parents decided to kind of create a 504 plan or yeah, 50, yeah, 504 plan. And so the idea behind it was really just to get the extra help I needed. So I would stay after school, um, study with my teacher for a little bit, get an idea of what I needed to do. And that would kind of help me boost my um, grades and stuff. So overall, I mean, I still do have a 504 plan. Um, it's only for a time extension if needed on certain parts of the test or quiz. And um, it's very helpful when I, um, when I need it, especially when I'm stressing out about something and I start to, my brain starts to kind of go other places, which does happen. Um, I've had situations where I can't exactly um, think straight and I'll try to think of like an answer to a problem and then my brain will just wander off um, just in the middle of that thought. Um, it's not very drastic by any chance, but I mean, it's still something that's worth having, I guess, for me, um, regardless. So, um, up until recently, I've had plans with my teachers in place. They, I always make sure to tell my teachers right away that I have ADHD and sometimes I have difficulty concentrating. So generally they'll try to place me up near the front of the class, they'll try to call on me at random times throughout the class just to make sure that I'm paying attention. I've told them that if they catch me like zoning out, feel free to call me out on it. I know for some students that can be really mortifying and they, that's the opposite of what they want, but I tell them like that's what I want you to do for me because otherwise I won't notice that I'm not paying attention. So, and I also have a plan to give me more time on tests if I need it, or more time for homework or classwork. Though generally, with the support of my teachers during class, I haven't needed to utilize that one as much. Some common misconceptions about um, ADHD and ADD is that they are just lazy, um, they just don't pay attention, they're procrastinators, they don't want to do the work, when in reality, um, there's like a mental barrier there where it prohibits them to be able to accurately and successfully focus and do the work that they're supposed to do. Um, they can't help it. Um, of course, you know, they, they can try their best and, and prioritize and plan out their day, but it's not always going to work out that way. And I really hate it when people call, you know, those with ADHD and ADD lazy because they're not trying to be lazy. They're trying to get things done, they're trying to do what they're supposed to do, but it's just so difficult. I know from um, friends that I have with ADHD and different experiences I've encountered with other people with ADHD that they do have um, the tendency to hyperfixate on things. And that can really annoy people. I personally don't find it annoying, I find it really interesting because I love to learn more about people's interests, but basically when they um, hyperfixate on something, it's where, for example, I love the show Adventure Time. Um, someone with ADHD might hyperfixate on that show and they will just talk nonstop about it. They'll, you know, dive deep into the lore, they'll buy all the merchandise, they'll just be very loud about it because they're very excited and it's something they're interested in and it's hyperfixating on that one thing. People think that they're just loud and annoying. I personally don't think that. Um, like I have some friends who hyperfixate on different things and whenever I have conversations with them, a lot of our conversations will revolve around those certain things within their life that they've hyperfixated on that brings them joy and happiness. So I love to just like sit there and listen and hear about how excited they are. And I really hate it when, like it just, it makes me feel bad because like I really hate it when people um, will just be like, you're so annoying. You're just so loud. Can you stop talking about that one thing? That's something that they genuinely care about. That's something that they love so much that they just want to talk about it all the time. And that's really rude and disrespectful towards them. So they do have the tendency to hyperfixate on certain things um, that they really find interest in. And usually when they talk about it nonstop, they're not trying to annoy you. They're just excited. They're just happy about this one thing that makes them happy. <laughs> I think the biggest stereotype about kids with ADHD is that they're just lazy. That's the one I get most often, although I face it less now when I'm older and I'll have a little bit more control over my actions than when I was younger. A lot of times I would hear people say, 
to me or to my parents that I was lazy or that I was raised wrong, that I was just not disciplined enough. And I think that's a really harmful one because it makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. And I think every kid with ADHD has a responsibility to try to control themselves, to try to work as hard as they can to not let their ADHD get in the way, but there are some things you can't control. And I feel like telling kids that they're lazy or they just have a discipline problem is the opposite of helpful. So that's the biggest one that I've faced. I think that, especially <coughs> especially with ADD, um, since it's more difficult to recognize in students, it's, I don't know if it's a stigma, but I think it's harder for people to be like, hey, you have this. Like, is there any way I can help? But um, as far as stigma wise, I mean a lot of the times it's perceived as boys have it and girls don't. Um, boys are three times more likely, I believe, to be diagnosed with it than girls are and they're um, more likely to be diagnosed with it younger, which means that they can be helped out with it much sooner than girls and a lot of the time girls aren't even diagnosed with it, which is really um, unfortunate because it is so difficult to deal with. And I know I received my diagnosis when I was six, which is earlier than most boys and it's earlier than, or six or seven, I think I was seven, so it might have been around the same age that boys are normally diagnosed with it. Um, and because I wasn't diagnosed with it earlier and they didn't realize that I had it, it's actually the reason why I was held back a grade. I lacked the ability to sit still, I was disruptive at times when I was younger, I couldn't, I had difficulty, <laughs> I had difficulty reading and like I wrote certain letters backwards because I couldn't like get that into my head, and which may have just been you're a little kid and that happens, but it was also like that really was a big setback for me when I was little and so that's one of the reasons why um, I had I've had difficulties dealing with it and I think that um, the fact that people I don't know I feel like it's more of just regarded as oh like they can control it sometimes and like dude if I could control it that would make my life so much easier but I really I've worked at it for years at this point and I'm just getting to the point when I was diagnosed 12 years ago or 11 years ago or how many years ago it was that I can finally like be like okay we're gonna focus now and my brain is like cool like I'm finally getting to that point and it's taken a long time. Ways you can help those who um, suffer from ADHD and ADD and are having trouble focusing on something or you know having a problem along the lines of that um, usually what I do to help is of course Opening up that conversation, being like, hey, um, I've noticed that, you know, you're struggling to complete this task, you haven't been focusing recently, would you like me to help you? I will usually do that. Like if, when I was back in school, when I was doing projects with people that like I knew had ADHD, um, if they weren't focusing, I'd be like, hey, come on, like this is, is not a one man show. Um, but I would respectfully be like, hey, um, can you please focus on the project? Or if they're having trouble figuring something out, I'd be like, would you like me to explain it to you? Not being like, oh my god, they just don't want to do their work, or they just don't listen, they're not a good student or whatever. I wouldn't, you shouldn't do that, because that's, that's not nice. <laughs> um, just be like, hey, do you need help on this? I would love to assist you. So it's those healthy and kind reminders to guide them right back on the right track. I do that with my ADHD friends where I'm like, hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Focus. <laughs> and usually if um, they're struggling with something or they're hyperfixated on something, the best thing you can do is just listen to them when they talk. Because what they're saying to them is important, and it should be as equally as important to them as it is to you. Um, and if they're having trouble in a certain area, honestly, you shouldn't think twice about helping them. Because sometimes they really need it. Like, I know that um, people with ADHD, when, like, when, for example, they zone out during a presentation, they need that help to be like, what, 
what did we just talk about? Um, and if they aren't listening, it's those healthy reminders again. It's also helpful to create that bond with them where they can be open and honest and be like, sorry, um, ADHD moment, I wasn't paying attention, I need some help. Opening up that conversation and having that relationship with them is so helpful in the long run because it'll make it easier for them to move forward in a productive and successful manner. And it'll also help you create a stronger bond with your friend, loved one, or family member. Those are the basic ways that I um, like to assist my ADHD friends um, when I notice they're like not focusing or they're talking a lot about one subject. Like usually that's very situational. Like if we're supposed to be having a conversation and they go on a tangent about something, I will respectfully guide them back to the conversation. Or, you know, when they're being a bit too loud or whatever it may be, just being respectful honest, kind, and understanding really helps the both of you move forward in the situation. If it's just, if it's me being like hyperactive, like, I don't know, vibe with me. Like, <laughs> there's like, uh, I'm not, I don't know how to get myself out of it. I kind of just let myself crash. <laughs> but if I'm like not focused on schoolwork, or like something and like like if we were working in a group project and you noticed I was like on my phone if like someone reminds me like hey like we're still doing this or like we need your input or like you're supposed to be working on this then I'm gonna do it because like I don't want to be that person in the group project that does nothing <laughs> um I think other people can help me just by calling me out and making sure that I stay on top of it that I'm doing my best. Really, the only thing you can do is just like, if I'm acting crazier than usual, just be like, Scout, did you take your medication this morning? <laughs> and I'll probably say no. <laughs> and just like, try to get me to start taking it again. Um, be understanding of the fact that if you're talking to me and I say, can you please repeat that? because I didn't get it. It's not me not being interested or it's just because my brain went on a little wander and I didn't pick up on it soon enough. And then I was like, oh crap, I just missed half of what they said. And I think that that happens to a lot of people who have it. You like don't even realize like, oh wait, someone's talking to me. And so just like sometimes being a little patient with us and just being like, hey, they're not being rude. It's just their brain is like, we're not paying attention to this right now. <laughs> I mean, there are times when I find myself just like focused on an object, like I'll stare at a certain corner or I'll look at a certain item and I won't look, I won't be doing anything. I'll just kind of zone out. And sometimes I need people to kind of be there for me to be like, hey, what are you doing? Like, you can't do that. And um, it does help. So other than that, I mean, I have my teachers who sometimes will frequently ask me questions like, oh, do you get what we're talking about? Do you have any issues with that? And some teachers are different than others, so they're less, um, they don't care as much about it, but um, there are always those who do, and it's very helpful, um, especially when I'm trying to focus in a class I need to do better in. So that is about it for this episode. I know that I wasn't able to be, you know, a big part of this episode. I just don't have ADHD or ADD, so I am unable to speak from personal experience and it wouldn't be right for me to speak for people with ADHD and ADD, especially when I do not suffer from that illness. Um, but I really hope um, that all the people in this episode were able to um, give you a better understanding of ADHD and ADD. And um, I'm gonna leave some sources below. Of course, I have my normal sources at the end of the video, but some extra sources relating to ADHD and ADD that can help you research and further your understanding of this illness. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I will see you in the next episode, and that's about it. Bye. Some butterflies, ooh, ooh.